Hello and welcome back to another video on a classic piece of studio hardware. This time we're taking a look at why producers love Pultec EQs. We're going to take a little look at what they are, a bit of the history and then how you can use it in your productions. Like many pieces of today's sought after studio gear, the Pultec EQP1 was first developed back in the 1950s when recording studios were in their infancy, just welcoming the sounds of rock and roll. The Pultec EQP1 was the first passive EQ, so it did not initially require power for its specific frequency signal boosting or attenuation. It was designed and hand-built by Gene Schenk and Olly Summerlin in Teaneck, New Jersey. They had met while studying electronics at the RCA Institute in New York, after which Gene worked for RCA and Olly worked in the Navy before becoming an engineer at Capitol Records. Schenk and Summerlin joined forces to form Pulse Techniques in the early 50s, and after initially focusing on electronic components, they made their first EQP-1 in 1956. In 1961, they released an updated version, the EQP-1A, which featured that makeup game tube stage, modified low-end curves and extra high-end bands. This is the Pultec most emulated in hardware and software today. The EQP-1A became a studio favorite across the world, and several other units were added to the range over the following years, including the 1971 EQP-1A3, a smaller version. In 1981, Schenk decided to sell the business, but when no buyer could be found, the original Pulse Techniques closed its doors. That wasn't the end of the story though, and after acquiring the rights to the name and getting advice from Gene Schenk, electrical engineer and materials scientist Steve Jackson decided to start Pulse Techniques LLC in the year 2000. He began manufacturing an as near as can be identical EQP-1A, along with other Pulse Technologies gear, and there are now half a dozen variations of the EQ available, selling for up to £5,000 a unit. In the software realm, Apogee's EQP-1A is the only plugin officially endorsed by Pulse Technologies. You can also pick up great virtual Pultex from Universal Audio, Waves, IK Multimedia and others. We'd recommend trying an EQP-1A plugin on your master bus just to add some subtle, or indeed not so subtle, mix EQ to your tracks. <laughs> We find that only using the boost dials for the two bands is better here, and you can even consider using two EQs with the second one's lower or upper band set at the furthest frequency bands away from the first. We had one EQ here set at 30Hz for some gentle bass boost for example, and then a second set at 100Hz and it almost felt like a mid push. But experiment with any combination, the width of processing is so smooth that there's little you can do to make it sound bad. You should also give some thought to using the plugin with this EQ in bypass mode just to impart some of that emulated tube warmth. Remember, as with using a lot of vintage gear, just running a signal through its circuits can imbue some lovely character. However, the best use of a Pultec EQ comes with a classic low-end trick, and that's what we're going to demonstrate here using UAD's EQP-1A. Essentially, this is boosting and cutting at the same frequency, but rather than one cancelling the other out, you get a resulting curve with more boost than cut, and a notch which adds tightness and character to low-end sounds. Select a low-end sound so you can clearly hear the results. I'll choose this bass line here.
Now pull all the controls back to zero for boost and attenuation and select 60 Hz as your base frequency. This is the most common one used with this technique. Keep the bandwidth dial or Q to a fairly sharp 3 at the moment, although the Q is never that keen with the EQP1, it's not exactly known for ultra precise EQing. Push the boost dial up to around 7. Obviously you'll hear your bass get more pronounced and possibly even start distorting. Don't worry about this for now as it should help emphasise the effect shortly. Now I'll push the attenuation dial up. This is where the effect kicks in, but rather than cancelling the boost we've just made, the EQP1 still applies low frequency gain, but with a notch before the high frequency gain. The result is a more rounded sound and any distortion should be reduced. As with anything, experiment to find the right position. If it sounds good, it is.